Welcome back to Cursed Mining. Today we are dealing with the devils. We'll redo and add thermal pads on two RX5700 XT Red Devil from Powercolor. There'll be a before and after with temperatures and I'm also trying to compare two brands of thermal pads. Our starting max memory temperature from Hardware Info 64 was 91 to 92 degrees Celsius on the memory when the cards were in the Windows rig for the last time. That is free software to see your memory temperatures I recommend to each and every one of you. To be more clear which card is which, I wanted to bring them into a high voice rig, but on the 3D printed GPU stand, they don't get as hot. That makes sense, not as close to each other as with the other rig. The maximum here was 86 and 78 on memory. So the experiment of trying different part brands does not make too much sense as both cards are a bit different, even if I interchange their location. But I'll still differ the brands to try it, more on that in a bit. Opening them up is straightforward and you can already see that the original pads have been extremely oily. That's often a sign that they are already degrading, bad quality or have been tortured a lot. I started cleaning already, tools for this are 99% alcohol and a microfiber cloth. We'll do the backplate first and the Red Devil is one of those cards where they decided to just completely leave the pads out there. That's terrible for cards like that because they will just trap heat behind the plate. So we need a few more screws from the front and in the end I am plugging the RGB the fan so that we can free it up. We are using 3mm thick pads for the backplate and power cutters PCB makes it easy to place them on the back side of the chips. I also checked where the pads of the capacitors on the front are and added a thin stripe to the backplate at that position as well. Let's turn to the front. From what I could find on the internet it seems we need 2mm for VRAM and then this cushions for the caps. I would guess 1.5 or 1mm. Digital calipers are helpful, but since used pads are pressed, you can never be 100% sure. Some people also claim it's 2mm on capacitors. Here we have to address the fact that these experiments can sometimes differ, also depending on thermal pad stiffness, not only thickness. So for the tests today I decided on 3mm on the backplate, 2mm on the VRAM chips and 1mm on the capacitors. This gives you the chance to compare that setup on both Thermal Grizzly and Jellit as I'm still differing in brands on the front. First card with minus pads and the second with Jellit ones. Both I added to the VRAM chips directly. Oh and don't forget to wait after cleaning with alcohol, everything has evaporated. The old process, cutting to size and don't forget that thermal pads have a thin sheet of plastic on both sides. You remove one of those, stick it onto the place you want it and that you have cleaned before. When everything is done, remove the second side of the plastic as well as redo the thermal paste. Taking a good quality paste can also give you better results overall. I'm using Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut and I spread it over the whole chip. People have told me that I go over the repadding process too fast, so let me show you a close up of the complete layout and where I added and replaced. On this card it is easy though, pad placement is marked on the cooler itself, so you could just go for that. Lastly, just need to slap everything back together. Here be careful and don't trap a bit of thermal pad somewhere. If you put your card back together and it's suddenly worse than before the modding, that just means something is not making contact properly. That could either be an overlapping or stuck pad or worst case the wrong thickness. Everything should sit tight and make contact. So back into my little freak rig, which is basically my Ryzen 1700X on the first AliExpress frame we tested and then just a 3D printed GPU mount added to that. Windows rig old numbers were 91 to 92 degree memory, but let's take the high voice numbers from the same rig as the base. So 86 and 78 C max. On the bottom you can now see the new stats, so we definitely got an improvement again. Weirdly, both cards were a bit different from the beginning, so the comparison of bad brands is not really worth something. But it was still the pure jellied card that had a bit more improvement. It's not really scientific though, as both cards were bought used. So they were in unopened states, but we cannot know how hard the card was run or how the pads were tortured. Nevertheless, 
this experiment showed us that no matter if you use Thermal Grizzly minus pads or jetted ones, you will have an improvement on your Red Devil either way. That also means for me that we can go with 3mm on the back, 2mm on the VRAM chips and 1mm on the cap. And yet again another model of card improved from stock. You can check out a whole playlist of modding different GPU types and brands by now. I'll link it for you in the top right corner. Repadding is nothing scary and it can greatly improve the lifespan of your card. Many people are ignoring memory temperatures and I feel that is not a good idea in the long term. As I get questions about warranty often, I cannot really answer those as every country is different and often even the same manufacturer has different policies in different countries. Best is to just reach out to them. Thank you very much for tuning in to another GPU modding video. Also my gratitude to all the kind reactions to the giveaway video who will give it a bit more time as mentioned and draw in October. I hope all of you are doing well. Please subscribe for weekly tech and crypto content. Happy mining and bye.